Hi, my name is Tony Westbrook. I'm the founder of Synthetic Dreams. Uh, I'm here today to show a new project I've been working on. Uh, after about a year and a half, I'm at the end of the first phase of it, and it seemed like a, a good time to kind of show the progress uh, of it so far, and uh, hopefully generate some interest uh, in it. It's a really cool project, I think, so um, I definitely love to get people involved in taking a look at it. So what is it? So the, the name of the project is uh, SynthNet, um, and what SynthNet is, uh, is a, a genetic and a neural emulator. Uh, so in a nutshell, basically, it takes a, a piece of virtual DNA and turns that piece of virtual uh, DNA into a virtual brain. It actually grows a virtual brain uh, using protein synthesis and taking care of uh, substances and all the kind of stuff we'll explain uh, in a little while and actually grows a virtual brain out of it. Um, and that brain can be hooked into robots or you know all different kinds of, th uh, different kinds of things, as I'll show off in a second. Okay, so I've broken the video into two parts. Uh, at the beginning, at the first part, I'm just going to do the demonstration, show you what it's all about. Um, and if you're interested, you can stick around for the second part where I kind of explain uh, what's going on, how it, how it was done, and how it works and everything, and the, you know, the computer science and the neuroscience behind how it works. Um, a little background on this demo. Um, it's based on the uh, uh, classic fear conditioning experiments. Uh, that have been done, like for instance, in rats. You know, the, the classic one of the classic experiments uh, is when you know scientists would set up a scenario where they would uh, give a rat a mild electric shock, um, and they would also play a, a tone uh, right before they administered the shock to the rat. Uh, after repeated times of, of performing that, uh, the rat would start to associate uh, hearing that tone uh, with the, the the mild shock it would receive. So in the future, when they just played the tone. Uh, the rat would jump back, kind of expecting to be shocked. Uh, the rat had associated, um, you know, hearing that tone, that auditory stimulus, to feeling the shock on its foot, and associated the two stimuluses together. So we're going to do that same experiment, only instead of using a rat, we're going to use my robotic buddy Bit here. His name's Bit. He's a uh, a Lego NXT robot. Uh, it's just a standard kit, and he's just set up in one of the uh, normal pre-configured ways. He's got for this experiment, we're going to be using his touch sensor in the front, and we're going to map that into his motor control so that when we hit that sensor, he's going to jump back. Um, we also have a microphone that's running that's going to pick up auditory stimulus. Uh, in the beginning, hearing that auditory stimulus won't cause Bit to do anything, but we're going to start playing that auditory stimulus at the same time as pressing his touch sensor, and hopefully he'll associate hearing that auditory stimulus and he'll just jump back next time he hears that auditory stimulus. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, so let's start the demonstration. So uh, just some background info real quickly. Um, so I've designed a piece of virtual DNA uh, that's going to be growing the, uh, the, the brain for, for a bit in this demonstration. Um, so that's going to be running on my desktop computer, which is this screen right here. Um, so we'll show that in a second. Uh, now what's cool about SynthNet is the, uh, the peripheral nervous system is actually uh, TCP IP based. Uh, so that means that it can actually send and receive uh, input and output from any device uh, on, on the internet, which is kind of cool. So you know, you, your device could be in the same room or halfway across the world. It could send and receive stimulus anywhere. So uh, in this demo, um, I have my laptop on this screen right here. Uh, my laptop is actually has a, a Bluetooth connection uh, or will have Bluetooth connection to bit right here. Um, so it's going to be sending and receiving stimulus from the laptop over my wireless network to uh, the desktop computer. So the first thing we'll do is we'll actually connect up the Bluetooth to bit. So let's uh, get bit going. Got our Lego startup noise. Let's double -click to get the Bluetooth going. Connect that up. Now while that's connecting up, we're going to start the neural network going on this computer. So I'm just running on the command line. I'm just telling it to use a specific piece of DNA. So we'll start that. And you can see it growing right now. You can see all the neurons uh, growing out. It's uh, running, a, running the code right now. Uh, you can see the, the, the color, the color uh, coordination goes to the, the membrane uh, potential level. So we'll, we'll talk about it a little later. So in this piece of DNA, there are two uh, main neural pathways. This neural pathway is going to be mapped into the touch response uh, in the front here of bit. Uh, the action potential is going to shoot down the line to postsynaptic neurons and it's going to activate the motor control at the end here. So 
when Bit's uh, touch sensor gets hit, uh, let's, he's going to jump back uh, in response as uh, that, that um, stimulus gets propagated down to postsynaptic neurons. Now, the auditory stimulus is going to be mapped into this neural pathway uh, further back. Um, and to start out with, uh, as that signal propagates down the line, it's not going to trigger off the motor control because the synaptic um, connections right here are very weak. There aren't uh, many receptors to receive the neurotransmitter, so it's actually not going to fire off uh, in the beginning. But if all works, as uh, I hope it does, then the same way the rat learns to associate the tone, bit is going to learn to associate the tone together uh, with getting uh, the touch sensor push. So in the future, the neural pathway will strengthen, those synaptic connections will strengthen, and bit will jump back when he um, hears the, the tone. So we have this mapped over. So let's start the client on the laptop. Okay. So just to demonstrate uh, this working, the first thing I'm going to do is just connect up the auditory neurons. So on the client, you can see uh, waveform uh, data from my voice right now. Uh, it does a fast Fourier transform on it. You can see the frequency distribution. It pushes that data into the neural net over the network. So you can actually see these neurons firing off right now in response to my voice. So talking, talking, you know, here you can see them firing off as I talk. All right. So we disconnected the audio for now. So now I'm going to connect up the robotics. So that touch sensor and the motor control. So we'll give it a second to sync. Now if we touch the touch sensor, you can see that fire off, action potential down the line, bit moves back. Really, really simple neural pathways just propagating down the line. We push the touch sensor, activate, neurotransmitter, activate, boom, down the line, bit moves back. Okay, so as you can see before, um, me talking doesn't trigger anything off, so let's uh, connect the auditory up. So the, ro the robotics are online right now, but me talking doesn't cause the motor neurons to fire off. So bit is not moving right now. Now I have a Korg keyboard next to me uh, that can play uh, specific, you know, specific notes. So I'm going to play a high-pitched sound, um, and that's the sound I'm going to have bit associated uh, with having his touch sensor press. So I'm going to play that sound at the exact same time that I touch the sensor. So here we go. Okay, so <clears throat> right now you can hear me talking and my voice is actually lower pitched than that tone. So you can see the neural activity, but it's not causing bit to jump back right now because it, it has only associated the higher pitch tone with jumping back. Now if I press the key on the cord, he should jump back. One more time. So as can be seen, Bit is now jumping back in response to hearing that high-pitched tone. He actually has now learned the same way that the biological brain uh, learns to associate those two things together. So I think it's, it's pretty cool. Now this is a really simple example, obviously. Um, of just simple fear conditioning, the kind of thing that we see uh, just in the amygdala. But um, the fact that we took a piece, in, a piece of DNA and we grew a brain out of this using that piece of DNA, if we can do a simple model like this, um, you know, sky's the limit as far as, you know, as long as we have enough processing power there, uh, we can design any kind of neural net. Um, and I'll explain in a second the, uh, the neuroscience behind it, what SynthNet does and does not support. But I think it's pretty exciting and I'm, I'm really eager to see uh, where it goes.